Arsenal are top of the league, at least until Liverpool kick off in a few hours as Arteta makes wholesale changes and they dispatch Luton Town 2-0. Jules, yeah. he made the right call. Yeah, but... five changes, no Rice, no Saka, no Jorginho, for example. Uh, and they were good. They were, they, were, they were clinical, let's put it that way. They were serious. They did the job. They were 2 0 up at half time, then they controlled the second half, not to concede, not to do too much, not to score a third. There was more rotation do done, sorry, in the in that second half in terms of substitution. So overall, a good a good night. And as we say, at this end of the season, it's just about winning. Yeah, the eight really games in twenty two days, yeah. Exactly. Uh, but shout out to Luton as well. They have a ton of yeah. players out. Just yeah, you don't know yeah. who they are tough. because yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. A late Dominic Calvert Lewin penalty gives Everton a one one draw away to Newcastle. Jewel, there was a lot of stake for both clubs in this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean Everton of course, uh, in the fight against relegation and all of that for Newcastle after the West Ham win, incredible win, to keep that momentum, to try to bridge that gap with the European places. And I, I don't know how Newcastle didn't win that game. They had so many chances. Pickford, who was by far man of the match, made so many saves. Sean Dyke kept, still complained after the kept game. Everton is in. I mean, the penalty, <laughs> even the penalty. He's complaining about how long it took to give the penalty. He said yeah. it was obvious. Oh, uh, yeah, so obvious, yeah. I mean, <laughs> good for them. I don't think these kind of performances will save Everton. I know, if, you know, going to St. James's Park is not easy, blah, 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 all of that. But it was not good from Everton. Even if Dyche said the second half was a bit better, I didn't think it was, to be fair. So, well done to them. They still somehow managed to get a point, and it's a big disappointment for Newcastle. Tottenham are held a 1-1 draw away to West Ham. Are you just going to blame Ange's, Ange, Ange's uh, uh, set-piece defending? Yeah. Or will you show a tiny bit of love for nope. David Moyes? Nope. Four straight years in Europe. And he's not getting much love from his own supporters other than Don oh, Hutchinson. Oh, what a surprise. Eh? I'm not a David Moyes fan, as you know. I'm not going to defend him now. Okay, they go... They got a point. They defended well, to be fair to West Ham, uh, which hasn't always been the case this season. From a Spurs point of view, another goal considered on set pieces. I, I don't understand. What well, did, did this particular one is especially bad. Go on YouTube and see it. It's yeah, like it's with the back of Zuma. It's, it's dreadful. Kurt Zuma is the size of a building. No, you like, can't miss him. They're clearly not but working on it, Gab. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have improved by now. Well, there's no offsides on corner kicks for obvious reasons because the ball comes. Is it an inch on your right? So you see this large man at the far post by himself. I appreciate you're marking zonally, but surely you either you lower the level of the zone because you understand that if they put a ball in there and yeah, the keeper I, doesn't get it, no, there's they, nobody to get it. It's not the first time, so there's clearly a problem that they can't fix. I don't understand how they don't fix it. I was not happy with Postecoglou's substitutions anyway. I didn't think it made sense whatsoever. And in the end, I thought it was a disappointing performance from the Spurs' point of view. So, it is a way against West Ham. No. The London derby. West Ham won the Arsenal World Cup. Arsenal six goals there. They won six nil. It did, West Ham are not a good. They're not a good team this season. They're they not won good. the World Cup. Spurs are better. Spurs right. are better than that. And sticking with Spurs, Gabby Daniel Levy made himself the highest-paid chief executive in the Premier League with a package of six point five million pounds, which is more than seven million dollars. And yet, he says that the clubs need new investors and more well, money. So they're open to more investment. Yes. Um, look, he's a part owner of the club. He can pay himself. He can do what he wants. Yeah. What he likes. No, I mean, he owns about what? They think he's got about 30%. Yeah. The other guy is a thousand years old. So yeah. I don't think this is, enorm this is an enormous salary. If you can look at what executives uh, make in, in American sports, for example. In a team that is, is losing a lot of money? And a team that built a new stadium With and whatever. Massive debt. I don't know, but if they're losing a lot of money, he's losing a lot of money because he owns 30% of the club. Yeah, so, yeah. And the debt is for the stadium. I can kind of live with it. But um, look, Spurs have been open to new investment for the last 15 years. We all know people who've gone and spoken to Daniel Levy and said, hey, yeah. can we do a deal? What can we do here? And what happens? Daniel Levy drives such a hard bargain that they all walk away. That's so true. that's the reality. Brentford and Brighton battle to a nil-nil draw, but Jules, one of the big talking points is that for the first time in seven months in the Premier League, a referee, uh, in this case Andy Madley, was called to an on-field review yeah. by VAR Michael Oliver, and he did not change his mind as a result uh, of the review. Yeah. Key point was the tussle between Lewis Dunk and Johan Wiesa. And he was right, I thought, I really, uh, I feared, I feared for the worst, because for me, watching the game, clearly... The, foul, the first foul was on Dunk on Wissa, and then, yeah, Wissa kind of retaliated and, and committed the foul himself, but the first one is 100% right. Dunk on Wissa. So I was like, why are you, first, why are you calling him to see the screen? Then he went to see the screen, 
and I think you could see with his face that he was standing his ground quite well, and then I knew that he was not so gonna... it's really funny here, I think, because here we're seeing PR in action and live action, right? I'm not like I really I think we both really like Howard Webb. I really like Howard Webb. I support what he's trying to do. I think it's really difficult this season, right? Yeah. But basically the VAR people have a thing where they get on the phone with people who cover referees and broadcasters and stuff like that, kind of in real time, right? So the fact that VAR is Michael Oliver, one of the top two referees in England, uh, calls a younger referee like Andy Madley over, and and this happens. They went out of their way to say, well, Oliver just wanted to show him that there were two fouls and stuff like that, and what did he want to do? And so, well, no, nothing wrong with Michael Oliver calling him over. And I'm like, dude, you're not here to, you keep telling us, you're not re-refereeing. Yeah. If he had the right outcome, yeah. did Oliver, no, I'm sorry, you have to, rather than, because all these VARites um, started saying, oh, no, no, PGML, Oliver was right calling him over. No, he got the right call, right? He interrupted the game I, for no reason. For no reason. Because it was the right so, call. So, you know, I, unless, the only thing would be if Oliver's on the audio to Madley, Madley say, hey, did you see the, I was like, did you see the Dunk Wiesa yes, incident? Did you see it again? Case, yeah. And Madley says something like, oh, what Dunk Wiesa incident? I know nothing about this. Then yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Assuming that didn't happen. Well, you might. Yeah, but you're right. It might happen. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it go for sure. And sticking with Brighton, Gab, they announced profit of some 122 million pounds, which is more than 150 million dollars, which is a record for a Premier League club. Is that why Roberto De Zerbi, the manager, obviously seems so non-committal over his future and saying that he wants to? Uh, know the plan of the squad and the plan of the team and the club and the owner and maybe to, to see that money being reinvested? Well, I think I mean, we're outing ourselves. We, we're, we're big fans of the Zabi's work. Yeah. Right? I find him very likable. I did not like some of the stuff that's been coming out of him, right? Fine, you want to complain, complain about injuries and stuff like that. Just stop going on about the project and the investment and stuff like that. You know what Brighton is. You knew what the, the outlook at exactly. Brighton was when it came over. You also, you know, read the room. If you've ever met Tony Bloom, we've both met him, right? Yeah. There's a reason they call that guy the lizard, right? He's not emotional. You're not <laughs> going to pressure not. Tony Bloom into doing... And it's he cares more about Brighton than you do. Yeah, so exactly. So this serves you no purpose, right? You know... But it's because he, he wants to leave, right? Otherwise... He, he wants to leave. Like he that. can leave. He can leave. They're, 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 I'm sure there's a clause in there. They're not going to yeah, keep him yeah, as well. They'll pay clause. up like they paid up for Potter and so on. And by the way, regarding Tony Bloom... Um, they used some of this profit to pay down the loan. He put his own money into the club. Yeah. He loaned the club uh, money interest-free. The club still owe him 373 million pounds after he took some of that money, about 30 million, to, to pay that down. So I think they have a right now to kind of stabilize the club. Mm -hmm.